Lee had slowly awoken after being trapped inside the cigarette truck for as long as he could remember. He slowly rubbed his eyes to gain his eyesight back, and for the first thing he took note was of how now the nighttime, he, how long he had been asleep for. He looked around the back door and was happy to see the walkers were no longer trying to get in, but what next to him left him shocked and worried. Pete was laying against the ground barely moving, his body facing the back door. Lee was unsure if he had reanimated or not, and he wasn't going to take any chances. Pete, you alright? The older man did not respond. Shit. Lee already assumed he was dead, and slowly reached into his hand with his back pocket, raced out his Gawk 17. He hoped that he had not wasted his animation back in the river, because if he did, and Pete being by the door, he would certainly be trapped inside with no way of killing him. Being as cautious as he could, Lee slowly crept towards Pete, trying to make less noise as possible. He continued doing so until he was standing only a few foot away from Pete, and he prayed to God that he would not suddenly roll over and take a bite out of him. Lee placed his hand upon his shoulder and shook him slightly, and whispering his name out to him, Pete? Pete? In the quick of a flash, Pete had suddenly rolled upwards. Lee's instincts kicked in and jumped out of harm's way before it was too late. Laying straight onto his back, he sighed, in relief that Pete had not yet reanimated, but it did look like he did not have long left before he would come back as one of them. Lee, Pete coughed as he leaned up against the back of the inside of the truck. His entire skin looked very pale as he was too weak to move upon on his own. He was unable to summon the strength to turn his attention towards Lee, knowing that he wasn't going to much, last much longer. You want to hear something funny? I've been thinking, and I don't want to die. Never thought a kind of idiot would say something like this, but here it is. I'm scared, Lee. Jesus, I'm scared, Lee, and I'm not going to make it. Lee, can you do something for me? Lee nodded in response. Can you take care of Nick? Pete wished, requested, knowing that his nephew was still too young to take care of himself at his younger age. He almost lost everything, and I don't know how long it would be before he loses hope. Watch out for him, will ya? I will, Pete, Lee assured him. I promise. Thanks, Lee. You're a good guy, Pete complimented, groaning slightly as he tried to summon men to the strength to keep himself awake. You should make a break for it. Cabin's only half a mile from here. You just keep heading straight until you find out. I wish you could come with me, Lee admitted, hint of sadness in his voice, as it was going to be hard for Nick to not even have the chance to see his uncle during his last moments. So you could say goodbye to Nick? I wish I could, Lee, but I can't, Pete declined, unable to move any part of his body. Now get going. Don't worry about me. Lee nodded in agreement with a sad expression across his face. He made it over towards the back doors, slowly pushed open the door, checking if the coast was clear or not. He could see a couple of walkers roaming around the area, but they did not have any interest in the truck, and the two men were inside anymore. In the quick of an eye, Lee burst out from inside the truck, closing the doors behind him so they would not get inside and leave Pete with a suffering death. He sprinted as fast as he, his legs could carry him, making his way through the woods, with the lurkers focusing their attention towards him. Two walkers blocked his way, but that did not stop him when he knocked one of them over to the other, causing the two to plummet towards the ground. He did not care to look back. As he continued running through the early hour morning of Carolina, he hoped to make it back in the cabin, just in one piece. After running for at least an hour, half an hour, Lee was on the verge of passing out, not daring to look back toward the woods. But the good news was is that he finally reached to the cabin and lost the herd of walkers that was pursuing him. When he arrived towards the back of the cabin, Lee burst open the kitchen door, panting as he struggled to catch his breath. He closed the door behind him. Inside the kitchen were Carly, Clementine, Carlos, and Rebecca, who had ran over to him as soon as he entered with the words expressions on their face. Clementine was the first to greet Lee after Lee had been gone for at least a day. She embraced him in a hug near his torso, and Lee had returned the hug by kneeling down to her height level. Lee! Hey, sweet pea, Lee greeted, agreed, slowly raising her from embrace, but soon felt himself being hugged by his girlfriend, Carly. Lee, I was so worried, Carly admitted, resting her head down towards his chest, 
It was not difficult due to her height level. Lee, Carlos greeted, happy and worried at the same time that he returned after so many hours, but took note of the two being not accounted for. What happened? Where's Nick and Pete? We got attacked at the river, Lee answered, struggling to catch his breath, but after running for so long nonstop, we lost Nick and I was with Pete, but he got bit and stayed behind and I ran. And you just left him? Rebecca inquired, hint of anger and voice than usual. Hey, there was nothing I could do, Lee clashed, gaining an angry expression across his face. He was too weak to move, and even if I tried to carry him, both of us wouldn't have made it. Look, Lee, just tell us where you were, Carl Lee requested. At least he seemed no to be calm, unlike Rebecca. We were by the river, and Pete wanted to go to this morning, Lee quiet, quickly answered, leaning in towards the kitchen. If Pete's alive... I know where he is, but as for Nick, I ain't got a clue. Luke and Elvin went looking for you, Rebecca panicked, shifting towards Carlos. We need to go find them. Hold on, Carlos ordered. He was interrupted upon mid-sentence. Carlos, my husband is out there, Rebecca reminded, extremely worried for her husband now, and now that he was out there with Luke. Get the guns! Carlos nodded in agreement as he ran to the next room for a moment to go fetch the weapons. As he left, Rebecca returned her attention to Lee. Her expression changed from an anger to a worried one. Luke and Alvin went out looking for you. I told them not to go. Damn it, Luke. Seconds later, Carlos had returned with a rifle for Rebecca and a gawk for himself. He handed the rifle without hesitation. The duo was set off a better chance of finding their friends. As they were leaving, Carly stood up and raised her harmonic rifle up, wanting to help out to search the rest of the cabin group members. Let me go with you. I'm a good shot. Carlos hesitated for a moment, and he turned towards Lee for support. He too was a little concerned for Carly, but he gave Carlos an agreement not. All right, follow us. Lee and Carly shared a quick kiss and hug with one another before she left, wishing her good luck. Carly ran out of the cabin with Rebecca, and now that they were armed with protection, everyone prayed that they would find Nick, Pete, Alvin, and Luke, and bring everyone back here safe and sound. Before Carlos left, he had asked a big favor for Lee, and an important one. He stopped for a moment and shifted his attention towards Lee with a concerned expression. Lee, can you please watch Sarah? She's upstairs. Just distract her. Don't tell her anything. I will. I'll take good care of her, Lee assured him, raising a bit smi smile across his face, followed by a supportive nod. Thank you, Carlos thanked, but deep down, he was hoping he did not make a mistake of trusting his daughter's life with another man. We'll be back soon. Just stay inside. And don't open the doors for anything. Lee and Clementine watched as Carlos finally left to join the others, followed by closing the door behind them. The duo were now alone again, just like when they first met Clementine in her house when all this happened. The duo made their way into the living room to pass the time until everyone returned. The two sat together in couches, keeping quiet for a moment, unsure of what to say. Lee was the first to speak up after a moment of silence and turned his attention over to his adoptive daughter. So, anything happened while I was gone? Nothing much, Clementine admitted, shrugging her shoulders upon mid-sentence. What exactly happened, Lee? Me, Pete, and Nick stumbled upon these dead corpses when we got to the stream. I was standing in the middle and Pete and Nick were standing on both sides, Lee explained. Keep his eyes focused onto nowhere until he was drifting off to his own world. Walkers appeared and Lee got bit. Both of them were in trouble. I only got the chance to help one. I don't know why, but I helped Pete, even though I knew he was bit. You think he made it? Clementine inquired. Not sure. He looked pale when the last time I saw him. He could just barely just about move, Lee answered, but decided to stop talking when he did not want her to know anymore of to what happened. For now, he decided to give her a little job to keep her distracted. Why don't you keep Sarah company? Clementine knew a 100% fact that Lee was trying to keep her mind off the outside world, and she did wish that she would stop treating her like a little girl she once was. But nevertheless, she obeyed his wishes and stood up from the couch and made her way upstairs into Sarah's room. She arrived into Sarah's bedroom, and without knocking, she opened the door and was startled by an all of a sudden a bright flashlight. Bye bye, enthusiastic greeting. Say cheese! Clementine jumped a little bit, 
After being startled by her so-called new best friend, she merely watched as Sarah printed out a photo from the picture of the camera she had used to take a picture of Clementine. Look at this cool stuff I found under the house. Cool, right? Clementine did not reply as she eyed the picture on Sarah's hand, but had to admit it, it still looked cool, kid, since she did not remember the last time seeing a photograph of herself. Take one of me, Sarah requested, offering the camera to Clementine, who hesitated for a moment, thinking it was somewhat childish for her to do. Please? Clementine continued to hesitate about if she didn't want to take her picture or not, but eventually she agreed to her friendly request. Sure, get me one on a good pose, okay? Sarah requested, standing still to allow Clementine to take a picture of her. However, just as Clementine took a picture, she noticed a worried expression on her face. What's wrong, Clem? Where's my dad? Clementine was unsure of what to, what she was going to reply exactly. Not wanting to lie at the same time, not wanting to break her promise to Carlos, she just said that, that the first thing that popped up her mind, he'll be fine. You're safe here with me and Lee. Are you sure? Sarah inquired, but she did not want to answer for a new friend, who merely just stood there and decided to drop it for now and walked to the other side of the bedroom and sat down. As she sat down, she felt herself struggling to breathe for a moment. Sorry, I just need to... Clementine watched as Sarah took a couple of breaths for a moment, with her arms and legs legs tucked to her, not knowing what was wrong with her exactly. She just sat down on the opposite side of her to keep her company until the others, and hopefully she would not ask any questions regarding her father. The two were silent for a moment, staring at each other as they smiled. Clementine had to admit she did like being in the company of another girl. She and Sarah like having a new friend after all all this began rebecca did not sarah did not consider rebecca a friend of course but preferred someone her own age want to see what i found sarah offered breaking the silence and stood up for a moment to fetch something from under the table will you show me how to use it clementine's eyes widened as she eyed the gawk in sarah's hand should you should let your dad teach you she suggested but her expression turned to a fear one as she aimed at the gun at her. Don't do that! S -s -s sorry Sorry! Sarah apologized, stuttering mid-sentence. She calmed down herself shortly after making her way towards the window. Sarah looked outside of the bedroom window to see if there was anything useful outside that can help her target practice. Maybe I could practice outside. There's that tree. I don't think Lee or your dad would like that, Clementine warned, crossing her arms together while walking beside her. Yeah, I guess, Gus, Sarah admitted, gazing out of the window for a moment with a happy expression when she spotted a silhouette figure. She already assumed it was her friend. Hey, Luke's back. Clementine looked over to where Sarah was pointing at, but she was unable to see the figure before it disappeared. She clearly turned around and followed Sarah downstairs to go greet Luke, but something on her mind left her puzzled. If this was Luke... Then why was he alone after Rebecca clearly claimed he was with Alvin? She made her way down the stairs. Clementine made a couple of windows to, a, to confirm if it was Luke, but found nothing so far. She walked over to Sarah, who was waiting near the front door, and looked on the, her face. She was worried. Lee was there too, and the second he saw the two girls, he quickly ordered them to stay back after managing to catch a glimpse of the figure. Girls, keep away from the windows. Sarah obeyed and stood still as her friend as she approached her from keeping away from the windows. She gulped and she realized that the figure was not who it seems to be. Clem? Lee raised his Gawk 17 out of his pocket and poked around in the corner of the room where the figure was waiting by the front door and could clearly difference confirm that this was not one of the cabin members. The figure was either just going to walk in or maybe he would just knock it off as a civilized pair person. Sarah was beginning to panic slightly, as she somewhat recognized who the figure was standing by the door. Lee, Clem, I think I know him. The door knocked from the outside of the cabin, startling Lee and the two girls slightly. Whoever this was obviously wanted to get inside, to Lee and Clementine. This was strange, since they both expected it was just some random guy poking around. But as for Sarah... She knew 100% sure who this man was soon, as her eyes met him. He can't see me, Sarah replied, standing behind a wall to avoid being 
seen by the stranger. Lee, you have to make him go away. Lee arched a curious eyebrow for a moment as to why Sarah was so desperate to get away from, from the fearful form of this stranger who seemed to be recognized. But he made a promise to Carlos that he would take care of, care, care of her. Sarah, go upstairs and find somewhere to hide, and don't come out until I say so, okay? Okay, Sarah agreed, then turning her round back and making her way upstairs, but had sneak around to be avoid being seen by the window. Hello? The stranger called out from outside, looking for the window on the front door. Clem, just follow my lead. I'll go us out of this place, I promise, Lee assured her, raising up his Gawk 17 just in take case if it gets out of hand. Clementine nodded in agreement. Lee slowly made his way over towards the door and looked over towards the lock and opened the door. This may be the only hope of keeping the man outside. He slowly reached for his free hand to lock the door, but as luck would have it, he was a second too late as the door opened. Shit. He took a step back and he eyed at the man who opened the door. On his own, merely just stood there. Smiling at him, he had longish black hair, a black mustache like Carlos, and looked around his mid-forties, and he wore a brown coat with a row of fur against the hood. He greeted Lee in a deep yet scratchy voice, seemingly friendly towards him, for now at least. Hello there, sir, 